For more on this story, we can go across to France 24's Benedict Pavio standing by in London. Benedict, four strikes in one week. Uh, things are really going to affect uh, the British public. What do they have to say uh, uh, about these strikes? You're right, this is the biggest walkout in the NHS, the National Health Service. Uh, here in England, you've got nurses here behind me with signs saying, and you can hear the support. Um, Claps don't pay the bills. You'll remember during the pandemic, the public was very supportive of nurses, very grateful to nurses, who were banging pots on doorsteps up and down the United Kingdom. Um, and what we have here is we have today both nurses in England and also ambulance workers uh, who on the very same day, and it's a first, are striking. So this is incredibly disruptive. So on the one hand, you have very frustrated, uh, sometimes slightly angry patients who are desperately worried. They've already been waiting uh, for a very long time, often for operations like hernia operations, knee operations, uh, etc. There's a 90,000 backlog that was particularly exacerbated during the pandemic. And what we've got here is uh, really the public saying we understand what they want and mostly are supportive when you look at uh, the polls that come out. But these nurses say that they are burning out. We know there are 43,000 nurses uh, understaffed just in England. Uh, and there is real concern here because on the one hand, the government says we can't afford a 19% pay rise, which is the initial uh, request demand by the NHS. But on the other hand, uh, what is happening is that nurses are saying, look, we don't want to strike, but the reason we're striking is uh, because patients are dying. It's not the other way around. But there is an increasing pressure on nurses at the moment in the last 24 hours, as a government minister particularly said that this was now endangering patient safety. So the standoff is very real, and there's no solution, resolution of uh, this pay dispute in sight. In Scotland, there are negotiations, so they've suspended their strike there and in Wales they've also suspended their strike because they have just been made an offer. Uh, does the British government have a plan, uh, Benedict? Because you, you did say that they, they said they can't afford uh, a 19% pay increases but then they go on to say that would cause more price rises and in turn make interest rates and mortgage payments go up. So besides giving nurses and healthcare workers an economics lesson, w what is the plan? Well, that's the point, that nurses feel they are being given an economics lesson when, in fact, what they're dealing with are life and death matters, which is always true anyway of uh, medics. So we don't know what the plan is. The government keeps on saying the door is open for negotiations, but then you hear from the Royal College of Nursing um, and you know from them that there are no meaningful negotiations, there are no meaningful talks, they say, because the only talks that the government are willing to do are excluding any talk, they say, uh, about actual pay. So it is here in England that there really is this stalemate. And yes, the government keeps on repeating that, that any kind of public sector uh, rise would actually fuel inflation. Let's remember, we've been covering uh, strikes, train strikes since last June, uh, and we had train drivers and we were covering their strike last week. We've had bus drivers. We're going to have this week physiotherapists for the first time coming out on strike. Uh, nurses will strike again tomorrow. Ambulance uh, workers will actually strike again, not just today, but also on Friday. So this is a, a real, real issue now, uh, not just the backlog uh, of appointments and of operations that aren't going ahead, but also these entrenched positions and no sign from the government uh, of a concrete plan to actually resolve the pay dispute with these nurses. All of this during an inflation of 10.5% still. That summer of discontent uh, we spoke about last year has uh, clearly stretched into winter. Thank you very much for that, Benedict. Benedict, have your reporting there from London.